From the Cal State University Fullerton campus, where learning is preeminent, we present Conversations with President Gordon and Special Guests. Hello, I'm Dr. Lee bentley Gonzalez, and along with Dr. Milton A. Gordon, the President of Cal State Fullerton, I want to welcome you to Conversations with President Gordon and Special Guests. Today on our program, we're going to take a virtual tour of the new location for the Irvine campus. And President Gordon, at an earlier convocation, you stated in your opinion that the Irvine campus was one of the finest acquisitions for the CSU system. Explain what you meant by that. Well, now they have great space. They have a full functioning library. They have a full functioning uh, bookstore. Uh, they even have a gymnasium, and they have great classrooms. So I, I totally agree uh, with my earlier statement uh, that I think this was the best space we could have gotten uh, in Irvine. And I think that students that are currently going there would also agree with you. Well, let's bring on our special guest a virtual tour guide for today's program and tell our viewers a little bit about her background. Dr. Susan Cooper. Dean, Cal State University Fullerton, the Irvine campus. She has an EDD, MS Secondary Education from Northern Illinois, University of DeKalb. Former Dean of Mathematics, Science, Engineering, Irvine Valley. Former Interim Vice President of Instruction, Irvine Valley. Uh, former Dean, Advanced Technology and Library Service, Irvine Valley. And she was also at San Bernardino. Uh, and so welcome to the program. Thank you. Welcome to the program, Dr. Cooper. It's an honor to have you with us and congratulations on the beautiful location of the Irvine campus for Cal State Fullerton. And let's give our viewers a little background on the history of the Irvine campus. Well, the history of the Irvine campus begins in uh, Mission Viejo, actually, right. in uh, 1989 and we were located on the Saddleback College campus and we were there until 2002. At that point we moved to the El Toro Marine Base and we stayed there until the end of 2010. So now in January 2011, we've moved to our new location at Three Banting in the Irvine Spectrum, and we're really happy with our new location. Right. And, it's right. a, and I know that everybody's very happy with that new location. And President Gordon, the Irvine campus is called a branch campus. And what is a branch campus, and is this the only one that Cal State Fullerton has? Yeah, well, we have several branch campuses. But this is the largest branch campus. It will increase uh, to the maximum student capacity. And what would that be, Susan? That would be about 5,000 students. 5,000 students. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the largest branch campus in the system. In the whole of the 23 campuses. In the whole 23 campus system, yes. Well, now, Dr. Cooper, you recently celebrated a gala grand opening of this Irvine campus location. And tell us about that. And also, at this grand opening, you had beautiful murals on the wall. So give us some background on the murals as well. Well, the, the grand opening was lovely. And we had the mayor, we had the president there, we had students and alumni and, and members of the community in Irvine and business partners and education partners from our community colleges. Uh, it, w it was wonderful. We had uh, proclamations from our legislators and tours of the campus and a reception. And uh, so it was very well attended. And I think everyone got a really good picture of the of the tremendous space, as Dr. Gordon says, that we have and, and uh, what we have to offer the students. The murals on the wall are 12 murals, and they're part of the Art Miles Project for the United Nations. And we've been involved in that project with our Legacies Program for Students, uh, which is dedicated to being an agent of change. And we honor persons who are agents of change. And so the murals are created, and they're being given to the United Nations. We'll keep one, which is the Hero Mural. And Dr. Gordon's picture is on is the hero, uh, hero uh, mural. Oh, nice. <laughs> hero mural. Nice. Yes. yes. And then you were you able to see that, Dr. Gordon? I did see it. Um, now I don't know if it looks like me, but... <laughs> but you'll take it. <laughs> I will take it, Well, yes. now, first and most important, Dr. Cooper, you helped plan, design, you probably ate, slept, breathed <laughs> this whole move and this whole location of this beautiful new campus. So what does it feel like to actually be there? Has it sunk in yet? And what does it feel like every morning when you arrive at this beautiful location to see all of your hard work and tireless effort, as well as seeing students actually mm -hmm. taking classes there? What does that feel like? I think that's the best feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. I, we worked with some marvelous people. It was 
such a team effort with the campus architects and LPA who are our architects. They took everything that we wanted to make for that campus and took a vision and then they put it into operation. And so and as you walk up the uh, flowers, as you approach the building, it's a beautiful scene right. as, you, as you approach it. And the students are using the spaces exactly as we thought they would and we hoped that they would. Uh, the, the hallways are very bright. They have very vivid, bright colors, uh, blue, orange, purple. A lot of people think, well, these were just chosen because they were the campus colors for Cal State <laughs> Fullerton. But I think they really lend a cheerful note to the mm -hmm. campus. It looks like a very professional building uh, from the inside and outside and, and has beautiful finishes. And, and I think the students are enjoying it very much. And how big is the building? Uh, tell us a little bit about the building. And, and I know you said it was three Banting Road. And where is that in relation to, say, the freeways and the actual access? It's very close to the Irvine Spectrum Shopping Center. And it's close to the tollways. It's close to the I-5 and the 405. So it's very easy to get to, very easy to find. And uh, it's right on the bus route, very close to the transportation center in Irvine. So students who, or faculty who are coming from Fullerton, who come on the train, or if people are coming from South County, they can come up on the train, take the bus right over to the bus stop, and come right to the campus. Plus, we have beautiful parking. The students love the parking. They can park right, right outside the building and walk right in. So it's very easy. It's uh, 70,000 square feet. So it's a very large building on two floors. And I am sure that when some of our students hear about the parking, you will right. have a lot of students right. now for next semester. <laughs> Talk about the energy efficiency of the building. And we talked about the vibrant colors. And your concept and design, one of your goals was the open flow mm -hmm. concept. Tell us a little bit about that and how you maintained that throughout the building. Well, the open flow is so that the students can flow from one space into another. And so the library is a very open area. It allows you to flow right into the student union. And then we have an outdoor patio that was provided to us by the students, by the ASI student group. And they designed it and they equipped it. And so the students can sit outside to study or, or eat a meal. They can sit inside in the student union and study. And that flows right into the bookstore. So it's a, it's a very open flowing mm -hmm. model. Uh, students can be in those rooms even if officially there isn't someone there uh, staffing the space. Mm -hmm. They can still be there and study. And so it's, it's a very open flowing model in that mm -hmm. way. Um, the classrooms are many of them upstairs. We have a few classrooms downstairs, but all the technology in terms of computer labs are upstairs. And uh, President Gordon, the Irvine campus, the way it was designed, is, as uh, Dr. Cooper just mentioned, the open flow supports the uh, green sustainable uh, culture of sustainability that we have here at Cal State Fullerton. And tell us about the Cal State Fullerton main campus efforts for sustainability. I know that you recently signed two declarations, the Tellery's Declaration, President's Climate Commitment, and also the American College and University President's Climate Commitment. And you know, we're trying to get a platinum lead for um, our new dormitories. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be the highest mm -hmm. lead you could get for any kind of sustainability. And what's interesting is that Cal State Fullerton currently has right. some lead buildings. We have the right. Arboretum, we have the Rec Center, right. and even the Children's Center was built right. to lead standards that has right. the equivalent of a silver lead building. Right. So we are certainly way ahead in the effort for culture of sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, and they praised us, actually, for the sustainability of our mm -hmm. campus. Let's talk a little bit about the academic programs, the types of courses and classes that are offered there in the majors. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are strongly represented by the College of Business, and we have several uh, degrees, including the master's degree uh, in business administration. And communications is another college, education is another college, and liberal studies. So we have uh, full programs in business and in communications and the credentials for teachers, as well as master's degrees in uh, social work and taxation, and the master's degree in business administration, as well as education. And now, uh, President Gordon, we have several students, like 36 plus thousand here. Um, right. Are they able to attend classes at any of the branch campuses, or do they have to have pick a campus and stay there, or can they mix classes at some of the branch campuses and the main campus? They can. They can mix courses. 
for any of the uh, campuses. And what's interesting is on one program, we talked about how that even supported right. our sustainability by keeping people close and they didn't have to drive right. that far. They were right. off the freeways. Now, also, Dr. Cooper, a student that's attending the Irvine, can they complete their whole degree, their whole courseware for this degree at the Irvine campus, or do they have to, to have a balance between There are some degrees in business and communications that they can complete, as well as the master's degrees that can be right. completed there. Uh, education credentials can be completed there. Uh, there are others that we have um, uh, upper division classes to prepare the students to complete their degree, but they cannot complete the entire degree. Mm -hmm. So we have some that are concentrations or an emphasis, but we're working toward having more complete programs as we now have our new building. Great. And you know, Lee, uh, we have the largest business degree in the state of California. Mm -hmm. um, and that really came through uh, strong in these efforts at the Irvine branch Exactly, campus. that was a nice compliment to that degree. Well now let's talk a little bit about the faculty at the Irvine campus and, and the many faculty and how you support them there at the campus. Do you have camp, uh, faculty that teach both at Irvine and Cal State Fullerton main campus? We do. We mm -hmm. have faculty who uh, teach at both campuses. Some of them are part-time, some of right. them are full-time. Some only teach at Irvine, and uh, they teach because they live in that general vicinity mm -hmm. and they like to just, just work there. But we have a very nice complement of full and part-time faculty. About 110 faculty are teaching there right now. Well, since we're talking about faculty, Dr. Cooper, let's talk about the faculty development room that you have there and also the support that you provide for the faculty at the Irvine campus. Well, we have a new lab uh, on the new campus, and it's a faculty development center, and it's a bibliographic instruction center. So uh, students during the day can come and get bibliographic instruction, database instruction in their subject matter. Uh, the faculty can come and get technology training in that room, and we've done that starting uh, in January. We hope to increase that by all also teaching in our television classrooms so that if there's training that's available here at Fullerton that can be taught in a television classroom then we could have our faculty or our students receive it in Irvine so I think we're going to have opportunities for two different kinds of professional development for faculty. And what about uh, the many ac activities and services that are provided at the Irvine campus? They're really mirror or they're a part of the main campus here at um, Cal State Fullerton now, talk about some of the services that we have. So we'll start with the university police. Okay. And uh, we have the main police department here, mm -hmm. but now you have a university police down there. So yes, tell us about that. Well, we have a police office right in the front of the campus now, which is really, really helpful. And they help us with all kinds of uh, issues that pop up and also with parking. And uh, we have a police corporal on staff, and we also have community service specialists who uh, help us open up and help uh, settle issues that come up on the campus, and so that's very helpful. And that is really accessible, too, when you're first in the lobby right, right there, so that's very nice. And how about the admissions, registration, and cashiering? We have our own office there, so su students can come in, they can register, they can pay, they can get a transcript. We have a lot of students who attend at Fullerton, but they actually come to Irvine to take care of their uh, business needs because they live close to the campus, and they can just drop in and take care of everything in one spot. So it's very convenient for and them. And that's sort of a reverse service for the main campus students, mm -hmm. they can facilitate and you do the resources there and do their services without exactly. having to come back to main campus. Now let's go to that wonderful fitness center mm -hmm. that President Gordon alluded to earlier mm -hmm. in the program. Tell us about the fitness center and also about the unique flooring and how you acquired it. Uh, well, when you enter the fitness center, it's just beautiful. It's very modern. And again, the students were responsible with the recreation center here at Fullerton for equipping it. And the special floor was uh, identical to the floor that was here in the new recreation center at the, at the Fullerton campus. So it, it has brand new exercise equipment. There are weights. There's a special machine that does everything to get you into shape. And we have a men's and women's locker room with showers and lockers. and so so the students are in there on the ellipticals and lifting weights, and it's a, it's a really nice environment. The faculty and staff can use it too, but the students, uh, you know, it, through their fees, support that. So we're really excited to have that. And, and you would enjoy that. <laughs> I would use it often. Right. Yes, yes, I would. Yes. <laughs> and President Gordon, 
uh, when we talk about this unique flooring, we had seen that at the rec center, right. and um, that definitely supports the sustainable environment right. as well. Right. Uh, and is that our goal to have all of our branch campuses also be green and sustainable environments? As much as possible, um, because in the uh, rec center on our campus, uh, I don't know if you know what they have under the floors. They have uh, automobile tires. Oh my goodness. So um, <laughs> you can uh, climb the wall mm -hmm. and you can fall, uh, but you'll bounce right yeah. back up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about earlier the library, but let's mm -hmm. talk about that again because that's down from the fitness center mm -hmm. as far as on this part of our virtual tour mm -hmm. here. So let's tell us about the library area again. Well, as you walk into the library, you just see tables where students can sit together to study and work. You see tables that have computers for the students who need them. There are three study rooms that the students can use on a first-come, first-serve basis. There are, um, there's equipment for disabled students, and then there's a desk for the librarian and the library technicians, as well as a reserve area. And we also have a copy area that's very similar, so students can copy and print uh, in the library. And so this, this area is just full all the time. The students are in there studying and working. And uh, the tables that don't have computers have hookups so the students can bring their own laptops and use them there and study together as groups. So it's, it's a very popular area. I think the library was one of those areas that evolved in the sense that when the design was conceived and then as it came to be, it was something that was such a bonus because it was something that you had envisioned and imagined, but it was really better than what you had expected. It really is because you can, there's a lot of space in that library. I think before we were really constricted and mm -hmm. there wasn't enough space. There were a lot of people in a very small space. And so now it's very bright, it's very open, it's easy to move around uh, from area to area. And there are little study carols as well for people who want a little bit more privacy. Mm -hmm. But it also flows right into the, the Titan Student Union. So there are glass mm -hmm. doors there. So they can either be open so that students can walk through, or if there's an activity in the student union, we can close the glass doors so the sound doesn't come through into the library. And that's that inviting area that you mm -hmm. talked about with mm -hmm. the Titan Bookstore, the cafe, the student lounge, and then that very inviting patio. Tell yeah. us about that area again. Well, the uh, Titan Student Union it has very comfortable chairs and couches. Students can go in there and sit. They can watch TV. Uh, we have movies, movie nights in there. We have the women's film series in there. Uh, we have uh, uh, counters where the students can sit at counters and put their laptops and plug them in. We have wireless throughout the building mm -hmm. so that if you bring your computer to campus you can join the wireless uh, network with no mm -hmm. problem at all. And uh, there's a coffee machine in the uh, student union, and then it flows right into the bookstore. So mm -hmm. if you want to buy a sandwich or a salad or a cold drink or Titan gear or your books or right. anything else, you can go right in there and purchase that or mm -hmm. take your coffee right out onto the patio and sit under the umbrellas and sit out in the shade or the sun, whatever you prefer, and study or meet with your friends. And if a student would say to you, because this Irvine campus is certainly student focused, student first, and student oriented, what, what is so special about the Irvine campus? Is it right for me to take my classes here? What would you tell them as the dean of that campus? I would say that you have a small personal environment and you get to really meet and know your instructors. And one of the uh, biggest advantages that I see for students is so many of them move through their program in a cohort. So they know the other students in the classes, they know those professors, they can meet with them, talk with them, meet in a study group at the campus, uh, get one-stop service all in one place, whether they want to register or pay or buy their books, or get a transcript, or join a study group, or get the tutoring, it's all in one place. And again, it has wonderful parking. <laughs> exactly. OK, we should have started with that. <laughs> but I think that that point is well taken, because when uh, one of my friends found out we were going to do a program on Irvine, she mentioned that her daughter had taken her educational mm -hmm. credential there, mm -hmm. and that she is still friends with the group that she carpooled with them from mm -hmm. the main campus. She went there with all her classes, and they are still friends today mm -hmm. as a result of that having moved through the program. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're going to talk about an area that we're very proud of here on the main campus, thanks to President Gordon, and that's our area of technology. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the technology. I know that you mentioned you have uh, Wi-Fi wireless throughout the mm -hmm. buildings. 
and you have the classrooms. All of the classrooms there are smart classrooms, as you mentioned. Uh, you also have some codec classrooms, distance learning, televised classrooms. So tell us about the classroom, the technology in the classrooms there. Well, all the classrooms are smart classrooms, which means they all have active data projectors with interactive screens so that the instructor just takes a laser pen and touches the wall and it will open up the window mm -hmm. it'll it will highlight it it will color it it will close it, it it it'll do everything except you know wash your clothes with it <laughs> so, <laughs> it's uh, we have new document cameras that replace all of the old overhead projectors so you can project an image with a strong camera and be able to show it throughout uh, the classroom there are now speakers in the ceiling so that everybody can hear to every corner of the room and uh, they're very very easy to operate because they all are exactly the same it's all racked equipment for the instructors to be able to use and then we have a uh, four classrooms that have computer workstations that have special desks where the computer monitor will disappear into mm -hmm. the desk so that you can use the surface as a flat surface for a non-computer class. But uh, we have uh, PCs in three of the labs and Macintoshes in one of the labs, mm -hmm. as well as an open lab for students to be able to use uh, for their homework assignments uh, when they're not in classes. And President Gordon, in your early vision in the 1990s for Cal State Fullerton of Technology, did you ever imagine that as you, in 1990 early, and now here we are at 2011, that you would see the computer vision that you have expand to be able to support higher education students in 2011? Susan, when I came to the campus, they had all of these Wang computers. <laughs> um, I think the Fullerton campus has still been the only campus Mm -hmm. to get the state to put in the fiber. Mm -hmm. And um, they put in the fiber to all of these classrooms. And I said, I will build it out uh, into the computers. And in fact, I think the impetus is so interesting because when President Gordon came as our new president in the 1990s, he could contact people easier across the United States than he could across Canada. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes. I and said so I can contact someone in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. quicker than I could on, on my campus. Mm -hmm. And we kind of did that just so we right. could get good computers right. because <laughs> right. uh, you came. So. Yes. And Amir DeBarian, uh, he yeah. has been the finest uh, person in all of these technology. Uh, efforts. And certainly a state-of-the-art thinker right. and an innovator and making right. sure that we are always on the cutting edge right. and everything. Now you talked a little bit about the computer services, computer labs, and the computer resources. And is that for everyone, the faculty, the support personnel, as well as the students? Yes. All the offices have uh, computers. We all have voiceover IP telephones. So that gives us a paging ability throughout the entire campus, which is good in an emergency. We've had our emergency drills, and we've been able to m make those announcements in all the classrooms and the hallways and the offices. And so everyone has uh, all of that network capability for printing and for copying and faxing and uh, then the computer labs, and then we also have our teleconferencing classrooms. Mm -hmm. And we have two of those classrooms, so we're able to initiate classes and send them to mm -hmm. Fullerton or Garden Grove or anywhere else in the CSU, anywhere else in, in the world, actually. Uh, or we can receive them if there are classes that are taught here at Fullerton, then our students can receive them in uh, Irvine. And other support student services that you have is a student services row. So mm -hmm. tell us all about that row that's specific just to students, the kind of resources and services that are available in that mm -hmm. row. Well, we have financial aid for our students, and that's one of the offices that students use quite a lot <laughs> with these times. Uh, we also have academic advising, and so the students can go in and get advisement about their uh, Titan degree audit or uh, the classes that they are taking or they need to take uh, to complete their programs. We also have an open area for study groups and tutoring and where mm -hmm. students can gather and just meet as groups before their classes start. So again, it's that kind of open concept, mm -hmm. but there are still some private rooms that the students can go to to study together or study by themselves if that's what they choose to do. And you have what we call a smart group study room. Do you have to be smart to use that group? <laughs> <laughs> well, we think all of our students are smart. So everybody uses yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, everybody uses it. Uh, they can
can reserve time in that mm -hmm. room, uh, and it's pretty pretty widely used. We mm -hmm. usually have uh, master's level students who are using that room uh, for the evening classes mm -hmm. more, and then uh, undergraduate students using it more during And what the about day. the huddle rooms for the mm -hmm. students? The huddle rooms are, are among my favorite rooms. Those are little rooms that are kind of pie-shaped, and they have kiosks in them that have a computer if the students don't have a computer. But they have little pocket doors that close and glass on one side, and the students will go in there and camp out with all of their you know, backpacks and items, and they can go in there and study by themselves, or they go in and study as groups. And it's just a little quiet study room, but it's got very vivid colors, and we have several of them on the second floor, kind of near our little kitchenette areas. The kitchenettes have vending machines and counters where the students can put their laptops. So they're just open areas where the students can be out of the classroom, but still have a little privacy, but still be able to congregate with their friends. And these are great areas for students who have classes at different times yes. that they just need a place to study and to merge mm -hmm. until the next class. Now, what about the Hazel Miller Croy Reading Center? That's on the first floor, and that's next to our Community Learning and Literacy Center, and those are both centers that are sponsored by our College of Education. And so uh, we have a lot of reading students, and they bring students, little students, uh, to the campus and they come for reading tutoring and instruction. And so they have a lot of reading materials. There was a reading festival several years ago when we were at the El Toro campus. And so they also provide professional development for teachers who are out in K-12 schools uh, for literacy and reading instruction and the newest methods. So we're really happy to have them. And you also have some partnerships in the Irvine area for the Irvine campus here at Cal State Fullerton. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the partnerships that you've developed. Well, so far we've developed some partnerships with South County uh, schools, and that's come about through a partnership with uh, Mission Hospital that we've become a member of. We've joined several of the Chambers of Commerce in South Orange County, and so we're starting to participate in those activities and uh, the Education Committee for the Chamber of Commerce in Irvine. So slowly but surely, we're making our presence known, and uh, we're, we're open to partnerships from anyone who came to our open house and our, our dedication, or anyone who's viewing this program and would like to be uh, a partner with Cal State Fullerton Irvine campus. And what about nursing programs? You have some nursing programs there as well. Well, we're, we're beginning again with nursing, and we have one class right now. We're going to have four classes in the fall, and uh, we have a wonderful location between the new Kaiser Hospital in Irvine and the new Hogue Hospital in Irvine. We're just two blocks away. So so that's going to give the nursing students a chance to take classes, have their clinical experience, go out to the hospitals for that practice, and so we're really excited about that. And does the Irvine location offer in their classrooms expansion possibilities so that if a, if a certain course, say like nursing expanded, would you be able to facilitate further classes there? We would, because we have uh, um, many classes at night from 4 until 7 or 7 until 10, but we have a lot of space during the day that we can still fill up and uh, we would be happy to have more classes uh, from all of the colleges so that the students can complete their programs in as timely a fashion as they can manage. Many of our students work full time, their parents, they uh, have a lot of responsibilities. So uh, the going to school is one more thing that they've added to their plate and the uh, wider time frames that we can allow them because people teach or work uh, different shifts mm -hmm. and, and want to go to school at different times of the day on different days. So uh, the better we can provide that. And uh, you know, Lee, we have the now new doctorate of nursing program. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, we're going to share that with two universities, uh, several universities in the um, Long Beach and LA area. But uh, we got that uh, doctorate of nursing. And when Steve Murray and I went back to Washington, D.C., we visited um, uh, nursing areas uh, where we could uh, get a much greater production for the nursing uh, support programs. Mm -hmm. And our new school of nursing as well. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, Dr. Cooper, what would a student need to do to become a student at the Irvine campus? 
uh, students can do one of two things. They can apply to Cal State Fullerton through uh, csumentor.edu, and that's just the online application to be able to apply to uh, the university. If they wanted to take a class uh, and try a class out before they would apply to the university, they can attend through Open University through Extended Education, mm -hmm. and they can either do that online or they can come into the campus and they can fill out some forms, and, and if there's space, they can then apply uh, to uh, go into a class. Perfect. And President Gordon, since we acquired the Irvine campus, uh, even back in the Mission Viejo days, the right. Saddleback days, the El Toro days, and now here at Banting, uh, Three Banting, what have been some of the added benefits, the added value to the campus, the faculty, the staff, and the students? Well, we can now satisfy much greater student body uh, in the Three Banting area. Mm -hmm. Um, as Susan was saying, we can now have four to 5,000 students there, um, and we're going to be able to do more online mm -hmm. courses uh, there. Um, and as I've said before, I think this is the greatest space that we could ever have imagined. Mm -hmm. um, we have a full functioning library. We have a full functioning bookstore. And as Susan was saying, we have now a gymnasium uh, <laughs> that's uh, full functioning. And everybody will be fit. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, we've certainly enjoyed this virtual tour, Dr. Cooper, and we seem to be at the end of it, but you've shared a lot of information today. And if anyone was interested in finding out more information, and you mentioned a moment ago about mm -hmm. partnerships mm -hmm. or becoming a student or just about the Irvine campus in general, what would be good contact information for them? They could go online to mm -hmm. our website and that's easy to get to from the main page of uh, Cal State Fullerton's campus on the left-hand side, or drop by or give us a call, and any of those would we would be welcome and happy and to And the number is 657-278-1600. Okay, we'll make sure that we put that graphic up on the screen. Mm -hmm. And President Gordon, what if one of our viewers would like to contact Cal State Fullerton? What would be a number that they could call? Well, they could certainly call 657-278-2011. Uh, and ask for the main line and ask for any areas of interest. All right, we'll be sure and put that up on the screen as well. And also, Dr. Cooper, we're at the end of the segment right now, but thank you so much for joining us. It's been absolutely a pleasure, and congratulations again on a job well done. It's a beautiful campus, and, and we're just so proud of it and proud of you too as well. Thank you. And continued success to you in your future endeavors with the campus and the students. Thank you. And President Gordon, that's our program for today. Any final comments as we close? Well, when the viewers hear the word where learning is preeminent, they will know they're referring to Cal State University Fullerton. Thanks, President Gordon. I want to thank our special guest, Dr. Susan Cooper, for joining us, and I want to thank you for watching. I invite you to join us again for another Conversations with President Gordon and Special Guests. From the Cal State Fullerton campus where learning is preeminent, I'm Dr. Lee Bentley Gonzalez. Have a nice week, and we'll see you next time.